All right, hi everyone, uh, I'm Ari. Uh, and today I'm gonna to be talking about a hierarchical algorithm for extreme clustering. This is joint work with Nick Monath, who's here today, uh, Akshay Krishnamurthy and Andrew McCallum. So clustering is a core machine learning problem in which the goal is to divide a set of objects into disjoint subsets. For example, we could be clustering points in the plane where one valid clustering of these points corresponds to the colors on the screen. It's ubiquitous in data science. Uh, clustering is used for analysis and visualization of data sets. It's used as a component in pre-processing for feature engineering. It's used as an inference mechanism for deduplication in databases uh, or entity resolution or co-reference. Um, it's used in image segmentation among other, uh, among other applications. So when I say extreme clustering, what I mean is uh, large scale clustering problems where the number of points n is very large but we also expect that the number of clusters k is very large. And in fact, uh, we find a lot of these, these data sets in practice. So for example, the very popular ImageNet data set contains 14 million images from over 21,000 classes. Another example is the NIST iVector challenge data set. This is uh, 36,000 audio samples from 5,000 speakers. And while n here is uh, small compared to the ImageNet n, um, the number of clusters here is very large to the number of samples or the number of audio samples. Finally, in, uh, in, in information retrieval, there's the track car data set, which includes 35 million passages from 100,000 articles, um, and the list goes on. So if you've ever heard of power law uh, data sets or data sets that exhibit, exhibit power law properties, these tend to exhibit this large n, large k property. So what's wrong with our current algorithms for these extreme clustering problems? Well, consider Lloyd's algorithm, which we talked about in an earlier talk. Um, this is also colloquially known as k-means. So if I have a data set and I want to partition it into four, in the inner loop of this algorithm, what I need to do is for every point, compare it to the mean of every cluster, right? Um, now, what if I told you that I wanted 20 classes, right? So now I have to compute uh, five times more distances in the inner loop of my algorithm, which is much more expensive. Um, and so just by the fact that I wanted more clusters from the same clustering algorithm, things are getting much more expensive. So where can we look for inspiration uh, in previous work? So one idea is the core set family of algorithms, where the idea is to construct a core set, which is basically a small but representative uh, sample from the data. We'll, we'll run an expensive uh, algorithm on the core set, and once that core set is clustered, we can use that clustered core set to cluster the remaining points very quickly. However, what you, might, uh, what you might notice is that it could be very difficult to extract a small and representative uh, sample from a data set where what you want really is a lot of clusters. Additionally, there's uh, the stochastic gradient descent algorithms. One great example here is uh, mini batch k-means. This is an excellent algorithm. It's very good in practice, um, but it also has an inner loop that uh, iterates over all clusters, which is scales linearly in k. Finally, there's Birch. Um, Birch is a hierarchical clustering algorithm that's uh, known to scale well in both n and k. And the way that it works is it consumes points one at a time and incrementally builds a hierarchical clustering. Um, the only problem with Birch is that practitioners have found in practice, compared to other algorithms, it's not, it doesn't produce as high quality clusters. So our approach to this problem is gonna build, uh, is gonna be an online hierarchical clustering algorithm, some, somewhat similar to Birch, but we're gonna do something particular in that we're gonna try and optimize for a metric called dendrogram purity. So in this talk, I'm gonna motivate hierarchical clustering a bit, uh, describe dendrogram purity, uh, describe our algorithm, which is called Perch, give some theoretical guarantees about our algorithm, and finally show some uh, em empirical results. So first of all, hierarchical clustering. Why would we wanna do this? Well, in the large and large case scenario that I've described previously, um, instead of doing a one versus K comparison against all the clusters uh, that we potentially have, in, uh, potentially have what we might prefer to do is do a log traversal in a tree. And this exact strategy has been noted in the extreme multi-class classification literature, where trees are uh, very popular these days for these types of algorithms, and they tend to be much faster. Additionally, um, when the number of clusters K is quite large, one thing that you uh, might need or might desire is having a high representational power, or a high representational capacity. And trees simultaneously represent multiple alternative clusterings at the same time. For example, here are some clusters on the screen, one purple, one orange, one green. If I'm doing interactive uh, analysis of my data and I wanted to get a more fine-grained clustering, I can simply split a cluster. And oppositely, if I wanted something more coarse or more, more general, I could join, I could merge a cluster. Um, and the other nice thing is if I construct a hierarchy on these points, I can choose K or the number of clusters that I want interactively. I can do it as a post hoc step. Um, there are a lot of advantages if you're a practitioner looking for, um, looking to kind of analyze your data in multiple ways. So 
what we if, what we want to do now is if we're going to construct a hierarchy, how do we know that the hierarchy is a good one, right? Um, one thing that you could do is you could take a cut of the hierarchy and evaluate that single cut. But that doesn't really tell you how good the entire tree is. You could have a tree that is consistent with your ground truth clustering and select the wrong cut and get a, a bad quality score. So intuitively, what we want is we want a tree that puts similar points closer together in the tree. And that's exactly what dendrogram parity does. It's a metric uh, for computing the quality of trees with respect to a ground truth, and it's been used in previous work. And the way that, that it works, it's, uh, it follows a stochastic process. Or to compute it, you follow a stochastic process. And this is the way it works. I'm going to sample two leaves from the same class. I'm going to find their least common ancestor in the tree. And then I'm going to compute the purity of the subtree underneath that least common ancestor. So I'm finding the, the subtree, the smallest subtree that contains both samples, and then computing the fraction of leaves of the sampled class. So here it's 4 over 4. They're all, the, all four from the lime green class. However, if I swapped two of these leaves and I repeated the same process, I might get a sample like this, where the least common ancestor is the root, and now my purity is much lower because the number of uh, the number of lime lime green leaves out of the total leaves underneath the least common ancestor is only four over nine. And so, dendrogram purity uh, has been argued, and we argue, is a much more holistic way to evaluate hierarchical clusterings. And what we're going to do in Perch is we're going to try to maximize this metric. So, without further ado, I'm going to describe Perch. PERCH is an acronym. It stands for Purity Enhancing Rotations for Cluster Hierarchies. And the main algorithmic components of this algorithm are very simple. So we're going to incrementally build a hierarchical clustering, as I've described. And the way that we're going to do that is consume one data point at a time and route it to its nearest neighbor. Once we route it to its nearest neighbor, we're going to grow the tree. But then, crucially, we're going to use an operation called a rotation, which you might uh, recognize from AVL trees, um, to maximize the dendrogram purity of, this, of the tree. And before we get into it uh, at a more technical level, I want to show you a visual representation of what's going on with the algorithm. So if this is the true clustering that I'm trying to discover. I'll, uh, I'll get my points one at a time. The first point comes in, and I add it to a tree. Second point comes, I find its nearest neighbor, which is only, there's only one point, And I perform a split, which, uh, which grows the tree. When the third point arrives, it gets routed to its nearest neighbor, and a split is performed again. Now, when the, third, when the fourth point comes, which is of a different class, it will get routed to its nearest neighbor just as before, and a split will be performed. But now, if you notice, uh, this tree no longer has dendrogram purity 1, right? That means I can't select two subtrees here, one that contains all the green nodes and one that contains all the red nodes, and uh, the two trees that I select don't contain both green and red. So what will Perch do if it, if it recognizes a situation like this? Well, it's going to use a rotation that's borrowed again from AVL trees. And if you're not familiar with a rotation operation, it's quite simple. Uh, the only thing that we're effectively doing is swapping a node and its aunt in the tree. That's all. So if we get into this situation, we'll perform a rotation. And we can do so recursively until the tree is reorganized in a way that it, now it has uh, dendrogram purity 1, or perfect to dendrogram purity. If I fast forward this algorithm and I see a number of points from many classes, what I'd hope for is a tree that looks somewhat like this, where intuitively, again, all the similar points are being put in the same subtrees together. And this tree has dendrogram parity 1, because all of the points in the same clusters are under the same subtrees. OK, but now I've, I've, uh, I've skipped a very important um, component of Perch. How do you possibly detect impure subtrees, right? So it's, it's nice when you get to look at the labels of all the data points. But in practice, we don't get to look at the, label, at the labels at all. Um, in fact, in practice, the, the labels are never observed. And for some data sets, we don't know what the labels are even. So we can't even compute the ground truth. So how can we reason about dendrogram purity when we don't know the labels? Well, we'll make a simple assumption on the data um, called data separation. And uh, what data separation says is basically in a data set like this, any point in some cluster is closer to all the points in its own cluster than any point in another cluster. And admittedly, this is a very strong assumption. Um, but it has been studied in practice before. Uh, and it's, it can be thought of as kind of a sanity check for your algorithm. Like you should be able to, any clustering algorithm should work well on separated data. Um, and in addition, I'll note that through our empirical results, we noticed that many data sets in practice actually exhibit a large degree of separability. And that might not be so surprising, because um, all that separability is basically saying is that more similar points, uh, or points from the same classes, tend to look more similar. OK, so now if we're back to this example, how can we detect an impure subtree uh, online um, if we know that the data is separated? Well, what we can look at it are this, is this pair of nearest neighbors. And we can look at the distance between the two. And what we know is that the distance between the green and the red point that are circled here 
is larger than the distance between the green point and its aunt, right? And so if we can detect this, we can do a rotation to put the more similar points together and move the further away point uh, further away in the tree. We can do this recursively and compute, uh, compute the distances between both green points and the red point and their aunt green point, right? And if they're separated, then we know that all the green points are closer together than they are to the red point. And so Perch will uh, favor a tree where, um, where the leaves are rotated in this way. And in fact, what we show in, this paper, in, in our paper, one of our results, is that if you follow this algorithm, which is uh, online consuming a data point, routing to a nearest neighbor, and doing rotations after these checks, you will, always, uh, you will always recover a tree with perfect dendrogram purity, regardless of the input order, as long as the data set that you're running on is separated. And I should note here that if you're running a batch algorithm, uh, running on separated data is somewhat trivial. Uh, most algorithms should be able to find uh, separate the clusters perfectly, but in the online case, it's not it's not so trivial, um, and the rotation is actually quite necessary to make this happen. Uh, if you just route greedily, uh, you'll end up in that scenario that I outlined before with the three green points and the one red point. Okay, but the check for rotation is quite expensive, as I've described it, right? And I started this by saying we want we want to uh, handle data sets where the where the number of points is very large, and the number of clusters is very large. So how can, we, how can we do this? Well, we're going to use an approximation um, that's borrowed from a lot of the database literature. We're going to store bounding boxes at every internal node, right? And these bounding boxes are going to uh, be defined by their descendant points. So how can we use the bounding boxes to speed this up? Well, first, when we're finding nearest neighbors, we can perform A star, where the admissible heuristic is just the minimum distance to a bounding box. So as you can see in the bottom left corner, um, what we do is we, mu we measure minimum distances to bounding boxes, and we'll explore those, uh, explore those nodes in the tree where uh, distance is minimal. And so after, after um, some exploration, we'll end up at a nearest neighbor. And it's important to note that A star is, uh, is exact, so we might end up exploring multiple branches in this tree. Um, it might not descend greedily as it's been depicted here. Okay. But now uh, we, have, we perform a split, and uh, the tree no longer has perfect dendrogram purity. And so now what we want to do is use the bounding boxes to uh, recover a perfect tree. So in the first case, um, this is actually quite a simple operation. We can do what we did before, which is simply measure the distance between the two purple nodes and the purple node in the orange box and the green node in the green box, right? And if the data set is separated, we know the purple points are closer and we can perform a rotation. But now, if we, uh, if we want to compare two bounding boxes here, there's many more distances that we need to compute, so what can we do? Uh, I'll blow this, this image up so we can, we can see it a little bit clearer. What we're going to do is we're going to make two specific uh, distance computations. We're going to measure the maximum distance between the orange and the blue box. And we're going to measure the minimum distance between the orange and the green box. And what do we know if we do this? Well, if the, if the maximum distance between the orange box and the blue box is smaller than the minimum distance between the orange box and the green box, we know that all points in the orange and blue boxes are closer together than any point in the orange and the green box, right? And so now I can check for this rotation condition um, with, with two measurements, right? Two distance computations, which is quite, quite quick. So I've described so far uh, this rotation to maximize the dendrogram purity of the tree. But in, the, in our implementation of Perch, we include two other components um, that help improve efficiency. So the first one is a balanced rotation. So as you can imagine, uh, depending on the skew of the points that are coming in, the trees that we start building can be wildly unbalanced. And so another thing that we check for uh, after the points are inserted is whether or not we should rotate to improve the balance of the tree. And basically what we do is we use the bounding boxes to check whether or not a rotation will uh, hurt or diminish the dendrogram purity. And if we can prove that it will not, we can rotate just for the sake of balance. We also introduce a collapse mode, which allows a practitioner to specify uh, an upper bound on the total number of nodes in the tree, right? And this allows, uh, allows you to run this algorithm on uh, data sets that don't necessarily fit in memory. So what happens is uh, when, a, when a point comes in and the upper bound is violated, Perch will choose um, some, some subsection of the tree, some subtree, to collapse. It will forget all the points in that area and only recall the bounding box. And so now we store a constant number of points in memory at any time. Um, and the interesting thing is, in the separated case, we can prove that 
uh, using both of these balance rotations and when operating in collapse mode, we'll still recover, uh, we'll still recover trees with perfect gendergram purity. Okay, so the theoretical results are nice, but we're primarily interested in this algorithm and how it performs in practice. Um, so in our experiments, we compared, uh, we compared our algorithm uh, to other algorithms on nine different data sets. Uh, three of them represent uh, classic clustering benchmarks from the UCI uh, repository, and uh, six of them are actually data sets from other domains, um, mostly classification domains where we know the ground truth, um, and the number of points and clusters is relatively large. Um, and I should say we also, we compare against nine other clustering algorithms from various families of, uh, of clustering strategies. And what we find is, uh, in this first comparison, is uh, I'm computing or I'm showing the, um, the dendrogram purity of trees built by Perch and other tree building algorithms on the various data sets. And we find that Perch is producing co uh, competitive or better dendrogram purity, uh, or trees with higher dendrogram purity than the other algorithms. Uh, and what I'll, what I'll notice, or what I'll, what I'll note here is that uh, the data set on the right is ILS VRC. It's only a subset of 50,000 images. It's a competition data set, uh, it's a subset of ImageNet. Um, and when we scale to all of ImageNet, or sorry, all of ILS VRC, which is one million images, um, we find that Perch BC, which is a variant of Perch that instead of running A star runs beam search, so it's, uh, it's an approximation. Um, it's one of the only algorithms that scales to this size, and it's most performant. We also compare against some flat clustering baselines where what we're doing is uh, pruning the built trees heuristically uh, and computing F1 with respect to a ground truth clustering. Um, and we find that Perch again is competitive with or outperforms uh, the, other, the other flat clustering baselines. Another thing that we do is we compute the running time versus dendrogram purity of Perch and the other tree building algorithms as a function of the parameters uh, of their parameter settings. And what we find is Perch is able to, to build uh, higher purity trees in less time than many of the other algorithms. What I'll note here is that there are a number of algorithms that are faster than Perch. They're in the bottom left corner. Um, but what they're doing is producing trees that have uh, lower, they're trees of lower quality or they have less dendrogram purity with respect to the ground truth clustering. Um, finally, we do, uh, we do an analysis of the balance rotations to see how they affect, um, how tree size and tree shape affect how the algorithm runs. And what we find is that uh, with balance rotations, um, the insertion time per point um, is sped up. And so having, having shorter and, uh, and more condensed trees is quite helpful. So uh, in summary, what we've discussed is uh, Perch for and the problem of extreme clustering. Um, I've shown or discussed that Perch produces uh, trees with perfect dendrogram purity on uh, separated data sets. I've described the bounding box uh, balance rotations and collapse mode that help, uh, help improve the efficiency of our algorithm. And I've also shown some, uh, that Perch is efficient and accurate when compared to other tree building and flat clustering baselines. Um, so thank you very much for your attention, and I'll be happy to take your questions.